things have limits. Yeah, as an economist, you know about the law of diminishing uh, returns, right? Mm-hmm. And this is something that turns up in AI as well as everything else that we're working on. You can go and Google some of the images or some plots around, uh, say, GPT, Sonnets, some of these other models that are coming out and look at how they've progressed over time, these large language models. And what you'll notice is that they're typically on a log scale. You might find some that are show their performance against benchmarks and their parameters. And what you'll see when you plot these against each other is that the parameters tend to increase logarithmically. So there's an exponential increase, maybe even a super exponential, where it actually is bending upwards on the log scale. It's compounding much, much more quickly. But what you see is that the benchmark performance is sublinear oftentimes. In other words, it's basically plateauing. And it, it, it's so you're getting more and more resources going into these systems, more and more parameters, more and more compute, more and more data. And what's happening is that they're getting, oh, now they're up to 87%. Oh, now that next generation puts it to 88% accuracy on these benchmarks, 89 and so forth, instead of this big shoot exponential increase upwards, which is what I think we would expect, especially without any sort of fundamental improvements in how we're developing these deep learning systems, which are these large compute and data hungry uh, models had taken massive amounts of data and have massive amounts of computation environment in order to be able to generate these predict next token, basically. Something very simple that winds up being very powerful in, in use, but they aren't increasing in this exponential fashion that a lot of these runaway superintelligence hypotheses uh, expect to. Okay, so just to translate that, you're saying so far in practice, even though, yes, we have seen remarkable improvements like GPT-4 and then the, you know, the later versions is way better than GPT-2. Mm-hmm. But you're saying for, the, for each increment, they're dumping way more resources into the thing to, to get that extra improvement. Yep. Yeah, GPT-2 came out in, I think, 2019, 2020. I remember downloading it and being able to run it on my machine, play with it and train it. And I had some plans to set it up to write like these blog articles for me and so forth. And it, it was fun to play with, but it wasn't, it didn't change anything. It didn't change anything about the way it worked or the, or it was cool and it was interesting, but it was, it would quickly devolve into nonsense and gibberish <laughs> mm-hmm. without much prompting context when it was tiny. It feels like playing on a Super Nintendo versus today's systems, just the gap and, and the change. But it's also multiple orders of magnitude smaller and less capable. Like I was able to run it on a standard laptop and GPU. I didn't have to have anything, any special servers, didn't have to have anything special to be able to get this up and running. And I was able to you know, download it and, and play with it. It, 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 was, it was simple. Today, there's no way, you know, <laughs> these large language models to run GPT-4. I mean, it's estimated to be in the trillions of parameters. It's huge. It takes so much more compute and so much more data in order to get to that level that we're seeing. So you're really getting, putting more and more in and getting less and less out every time. Okay. And so you're saying just if you naively extrapolated the trends, it's like to get, I'm making these numbers up, but to get somebody who's five times as intelligent as the smartest human right now, would take 60 quadrillion dollars. I'm sure. just making this. Yeah. So that's the sense <laughs> of which, why you're saying you don't think that, oh no, yeah, we just got to wait and look at the improvements over the last few years and we just go forward. That means by 2050, it's game over that you're saying no, because also looking over the past few years, they've been just dumping way more into these things. And there is going to be a point at which you can't devote 80% of global GDP to training the next batch of LLMs. Right, so that it hits you know ninety three percent on the latest benchmark or something like that. You you, you get the uh, law of uh, diminishing marginal returns. It just, it's just comes into bite, and it's not. This is not taken into account with a lot of these systems. 